Hey, this is Will Wolf, and we're going to talk about spatial variability of submarine groundwater discharge in Baffin Bay. Baffin Bay is a hypersaline lagoon in South Texas that has seen an increase in harmful algal blooms in recent years, with many studies linking these blooms to excessive land-derived nutrients such as septic fields and agriculture. However, this arid region receives very little surface water runoff, which led us to the hypothesis that a large portion of the nutrient inputs are supplied by SGD. So to trace groundwater discharge to Baffin, we use radon 222, which is a noble gas that gets generated in terrestrial sediments by uranium decay. Radon has a short half-life, so it represents younger groundwater, and the ratio of radon in surface water to groundwater can be used to estimate a discharge rate. We do this by multiplying radon by the water depth at each location to get an inventory, and my objective here is to map that inventory across the entire bay. Radon measurements were collected in transects across the bay over three days last November. Water was pumped from the middle of the water column, and any radon dissolved in the water was equilibrated with an air loop that circulated through the detector. And so here we can see that our transects didn't capture every single square inch, but we gave it our best shot. The next step was to gather bathymetry data from the NOAA website. Our field measurements were taken at about 500 meter intervals, so I resampled the bathymetry data to that resolution. This was then inverted to give water depth instead of elevation, and since NOAA supplied this relative to the NAVD88 datum, I added the datum tide height at the time of sampling to remove the negative values. Next, I created the radon interpolation raster using the spline with barriers tool. The boundary in this case was the Baffin shoreline, and I made sure to snap it to the water depth layer to streamline any future calculations. And here we get the first glimpse of an interpolated distribution of radon across Baffin Bay. And so the lack of sampling points is certainly adding some uncertainty, but the general trends are showing up. So we see higher radon in red in the northern arm of the bay, uh, lower towards the Laguna Madre, and a few high spots here and there. But this map isn't really useful to us until it's converted into inventory by multiplying by water depth. And here's the moment you've all been waiting for. Here we go. So normalizing to water depth produces a very different map than just radon on its own. Areas that may have only had a slight radon signature now stand out as hot spots if they were overlying deeper areas of the bay. This is based on the concept that radon is diluted as it discharges or mixes into deeper water and is concentrated in shallower portions of the bay where there's not as much seawater exchange. These hot spots may be an artifact of the spline interpolation or more likely due to weather variations between sampling events, but there's also another theory floating around in our lab group that takes a, a different approach, more geologic and biologic. Baffin Bay is a unique host to serpolid reefs, AKA the Baffin rocks. Some of these reefs were active well before the last ice age and are made up of masses of silica cemented worm tubes. While most of the bay has a muddy, silty clay bottom that resists water flow, these reefs might act as a porous substrate that might penetrate deep enough to enhance groundwater movement upwards. The Baffin rocks are locally famous for the amount of fish that are caught in them and the number of propellers they have destroyed, but could they also be a major vector for groundwater and nutrients? So at a quick glance, there seems to be a correlation for groundwater uh, at these Baffin rocks, but uh, some more work will definitely need to be done on this. So the take home points here, is that we do see a high degree of spatial variability in the radon inventory across Baffin Bay, and this should be uh, taken into consideration if you're ever going to do any SGD estimations. And then we're looking a little bit closer into serpolid reefs and radon inventory, but some more work shall be done. Comment, like, and subscribe.